central lines first. So let's put the one in. I'm not going to talk about aseptic technique today. So I am clean. I'm aseptic technique here. I've scrubbed bare below the elbows. Bare below the elbows, the patient, if they can before these procedures, you've explained to them the problem. You've consented them. You've talked about the different options and they've agreed, they're signed. Um, that's all good. Okay, so um, I'm going to presume that this is all set up in a sterile fashion and I've got help if I need it. Okay, so without talking about it anymore, I've preset myself up here, which you can see I haven't because it's still after the last session. So first thing I'd say is I've got a central, I've got an ultrasound. Okay, so I'm going to try to find what vessel do we typically use in Bream anyway? What vessel are we going to aim for for a CVC? IJ, cool. Internal jugular, awesome. So does it matter where I go? Here's my ultrasound. I'm going up and down my internal jugular. Can I just go anywhere in the neck or can I, in relation to the carotid, is there a little trick I might use? So if the carotid sits right behind the IVC, there's a wrist that you can, you can puncture through your internal jugular and go into your carotid. Okay, so you're trying to go up and down a little bit where your IJ sits a little bit to the side of your carotid so you don't go accidentally through and back wall your IJ into your carotid. Uh, a couple of tricks to, yeah, if you're finding it difficult, you can put them head down a little bit. Um, you can get them to do a valsalva. And what will happen with if you do a valsalva, what will happen to their, it'll go, it'll blow, exactly, it'll blow open. Um, uh, and you can push down just gently on it and you'll see that your carotid will really if it's a weak pulse, it will, you'll be able to see the carotid very clearly over your internal jugular. So you found the spot, and what I would say is you do everything, um, when, you're, when you're advancing your needle, you want to always see your needle tip. So don't do anything without seeing your needle tip. So once again, I'm going to show you one way, there's so many different ways of doing it. I've firstly got some local, this person's awake, so after doing all the stuff we talked about, I've now got a helper. The helper's monitoring the patient. So full monitoring. I'm now concentrating solely on this. If the patient's sick and the blood pressure is low, then um, yeah, I want to know about it. Uh, so patients being monitored, I'm focusing on this. And I first thing you put some local anesthetic in. So I've got my local anesthetic needle in, and I do what they call a field block. Well, I call a field block anyway. So you put it under the skin where you're going to go. And then you really good, give a good 5, 10 mils. So I'll put it in with a small little 25 gauge needle and I'll fan it this way. So a good blever skin this way and then turn it around and fan it this way too. So I've got a big bulge of anesthetized skin there. Okay. So then after I've done that, you don't have to go too deep, but just around the skin surface. Once I've done that, I'm, I've got, I'm just going to assume I've got my, my ultrasound on. So ultrasound's in cross section. I'm going to do just a straight needle. We can do this with a cannula, but I'll show you this way first. In fact, I'll just get this ready. In the last session. Okay, so, in fact, yeah, that's good. That's okay. Um, what I've got is my ultrasound here. I've gone in through the skin, through the anesthetized skin. I just know that that's where that spot is. And that's, so what I'm now doing, everyone's a bit different, is I will pull back on the plunger, okay? So I'm pulling back on the plunger. This needle, this syringe comes in the pack. Um, and I should say, it's got a little hole in the back. But you can see there, but it's got a little hole in the back. That's where your wire is going to go down. So I go in through the skin. Ultrasound's on. I can see the point of my needle. And I've now got a problem. Because I'm looking up at my, my ultrasound screen and Forced to still be really easy because it's a big black hole, but there's a problem. It's, it's a bit dehydrated, and every time I push on it, that stupid vein's collapsing now. How annoying. Is that what happened? I don't know. It's what happens. It's a big, thick vein. It's big, big vein for sure, but it can be quite easy to close on itself if they're a bit dry. And getting that needle through this. So any tricks? How would I blow the vein up into it? So you can Valsalva, you can do it when the ventilator's pushing the air in, whichever one. But yeah, getting the Valsalva. So I get in a good position. I'm pulling back on the, on the syringe and I'm, it's squeezing down and I say, okay, I'm I tend to bounce it down. So bounce, bounce on the surface of it. Bounce, 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 bounce. And then Valsalva, pop. Okay, okay, and now I'm pulling back and oh, there's blood coming back. Okay, so there's blood coming back. Okay, cool, there's blood coming back. Awesome. So good, there's blood there. So I stop and I feed my wire with a little introduce to the tip. It actually comes in the hole all rounded up, but that goes in the end of this syringe. 
and I feed my wire down. Is it ever hard to feed your wire? Do you ever hit resistance? So if you hit resistance, it means that something's not right, so stop and start again. I would say clearly, if you're like, oh, I've hit, actually, I've hit resistance, I can't go any further, you're probably in the wrong spot. It should be really easy to pass. And when you're doing that, what you have to watch on the screen, heart rate and heart rhythm, yeah, you can tickle up the, the heart a little bit by putting a wire into it and cause a low rhythm ears. And if you do, it's okay, it just means you're definitely in the right place. You're definitely a little bit far probably, but yeah. So cool, so stop. About 15, about the third, three little marks on the, on, the, on, the, on the wire there. I've stopped there. Okay, I'm now going to pull my needle out. Okay, so here we go. So I'm holding my wire always. It won't get sucked in, but I might accidentally push it in or pull it out. So I hold my wire on this side as I pull my needle out and stabilize my mannequin. <laughs> and now I can see my wire on this side of the skin. So hold that there. And that goes away. The sharps container will, you know, somewhere safe. So now it's got a wire inside the vessel. Do I definitely know I'm inside the right place? 100% sure life on it that this is in the vein, not the artery. So I get the ultrasound, and I go down again on the vein and make sure I see the, I see the wire inside. And just in cross section, but you can cross, squash, 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 and you'll see the bright spark of a piece of metal inside the vein on your ultrasound. And you think, okay, cool. If you stuck this into the artery. It's okay. I've not done it yet, but it, it, it's okay. If you put a little wire, a little wire into, a, into a carotid, it's not going to hurt the patient realistically. Pressure on, go to the other side. But if you dilate the artery, that's where you get something into problems. Okay, so you don't want to dilate the artery. So this, if you're in an artery, this is where you want to stop and start again. Okay? So I now know I'm definitely inside the, um, definitely inside the, um, the vessel, the, the, the IJ. So now, what do I do next? The skin's there. Scalpel's got two sides, so the blunt side of the scalpel on the wire, not the sharp, and push, push, oh, okay, I thought go push through. So push through the, um, the skin, so it definitely went to the skin. The trick here, what some people do is do a little tiny little nick, and that's not probably enough, you, know, you actually go through the whole skin level, skin layer, come out, and you get your, you get your wire, and actually rotate it around a bit, and actually make sure that you, it has free, it can, you can move, because like, that's the next problem you're gonna have, so make sure you can move that, that wire around. And you'll find this is the same trick as you use in other places, in other, in other, other procedures. Now, are you drunk or not? I don't know. This here has already been um, flushed. I should have done it straight off, but that was flushed with saline. Or with, yeah, but with saline, it's been flushed. And then, what are these bungs? Why use these bungs? Yeah, what does it do? Like, not, not in craze, but if you had to explain. Yeah, perfect. Stops the, you don't want blood still sort of coming back here and blocking off and clotting off. So yeah, stops the backflow. So here we go, put them all on. I'm a bit thingy. I will also clamp off them as well. But I'll leave this brown one open. It says distal on it. What does that mean? Distal hole. It says three, three little injecting ports. There's a hole, it's the distal hole where the wire's gonna go through. But there's also another one and another hole. Okay, it's so where the, the med's going to go through depending on what I'm injecting in. But when I'm, when I'm going to feed this over the wire, the wire's going to come out the brown hole, the distal wall. So I've got to leave that open. So I'll leave that open. That's all ready to go. So once again, holding my wire. If I let go of my wire, does it get sucked down? It won't, go, it won't automatically get sucked down. Is that, is that really, I heard one person go, oh, if you let go of your wire, it's going to get sucked in. It doesn't get sucked in. But what will happen is, is as I'm pushing it in, I'm just going to start pushing the wire in, pushing the wire in, and then something gets in and go, oh, where's my wire? And potentially I won't get it back, and then I have to go to Perth to get that fixed or we'll taken out. So hold my wire until it comes out. Oh, there you are, the brown hole. So the wire's come out there, and now I can just feed this in gently, twizzled about, about a little a couple of centimeters up, and just twizzle as you go down. This is, into a little, this is going to plastic PVC pipe, so just bear with me a little bit as I get that little part, that little twig one right through the PVC pipe it has. Uh, anyway, it's gone through, it's gone in, let's say it's gone in. This is probably not having an ultrasound, but anyway, it's in. So there we go, it's now in about five, ten, about 10 centimetres, okay? So I put it down to 10 centimetres, there it is, there's 15. And when I've done that, I can now pull my wire out. As I pull my wire out, I might see a bit of blood coming out the back of it here. 
And what I tend to do is I tend to, as it comes out, fold over and just kink it off as it comes out. Why? Air embolism. So you can suck air in. Air can go into here and cause an air embolism as well. So you really don't want open ports to open air. So I, I'm a bit over careful with it because I've heard some horror stories whether that be true or not. I've never seen it. But as soon as that wire's coming out, I kink it over, put my bung on it, and I'm done. I'm a bit naughty now. This is just being me being honest. What I'll then do is I'll get a syringe. I'll pull back some blood because I like to see dark blood come out of it. And then as soon as I see the dark blood come out, I'm happy. I then get a saline and I flush all three ports with the pressure bungs on. I doubt it's going to clot in the next in 10 seconds and be doing that. And then securing it, um, I'll tend to wrap it up in a little little loop. And I'll, I'll suture these in. I'll just, to be honest, just suture. I'll get one of these little bio patches. Once again, there's a thousand ways of doing this, I'm sure. But bio patch. Um, which side goes towards the sky? Blue towards the sky. So blue towards the sky. And that goes where it inserts in like that. Okay. And then I'll put a couple of, just a, just a proline suture. We want four kind of proline suture through each side here. Some local anesthetic in there if you haven't put local through your fill block there because that will sting otherwise. Um, but suture that. Once that's sutured, I then will do, I'll ask for help from the nurses. But I'll then do for me a sandwich, um, so like that. Now I'm the worst person to ask about dressings, but I'll put a sandwich dressing on like that, and then I'll put tegaderm around the outside. I'll oh, say fix them all around the outside so they can always see the insertion. Can I just use it now? X-ray, perfect. It means just being really careful I am where I think I am. I've been really careful. At any time, the kind of places you're going to know you're wrong would be if you can't feed something. So I can't feed, it gets stuck, just stop. You know, if I can't feed the wire, if I can't feed the catheter, just stop, you know, and start again because it's probably not in the right place if it's too hard to feed. Um, if you pull back and bright red blood comes out, it's not good. And if you ultrasound it and you can't see it in your vein, it's probably not in the right place either. Okay, so that's the three things. So, you know, anything which just smells iffy, just stop and start again. There's no harm in st stopping starting again. You can give vasopressors peripherally while you do all that stuff. We can come back to it in a couple of hours when the patient's more stable. You know, for us, there's no great reason to have to do it quickly.